One of the nightmares that beset planners after the Russians had developed their own atomic weapons and delivery systems was that airfields could now be totally destroyed, along with all their aircraft, in one hit. This and several other factors, including the apparently insatiable appetite of jets for long, straight concrete runways, combined to lead to one of aviation's stranger manifestations. This was the system known as Zero Length Launch, or ZEL. This scheme aimed to shoot manned and nuclear armed aircraft off the back of trucks or out of concrete bunkers. It was intended that hundreds of aircraft could be dispersed throughout forests and in other hiding places around the Soviet bloc's borders. These planes could be ready, fully armed, to respond immediately to any Soviet attack. Another scheme would have placed interceptors on similar apparatus in hardened concrete bunkers to respond to any incursion by Soviet strategic bombers. The system relied on the use of very powerful solid fuel rocket boosters attached directly to the aircraft. Once the fuel in the rocket was expended, the booster had to be immediately discarded as it went from being a powerful source of thrust to a dangerously heavy drag on the aircraft. The tests demonstrated that by the time the rocket fuel had burnt out, the aircraft had been accelerated to 175 miles per hour. This was well above stall speed, and the plane should then be able to rely on the power of its normal jet engine to continue its flight. The two unmanned trials proceeded with so little deviation from the expected results that the project moved on to the next phase. The acid test for the system came with the third trial when the plane was piloted. This took place on the 5th of January, 1954. The recorded acceleration loads were 3.5 G, only slightly greater than a standard Navy catapult launch. The pilot had no difficulty taking control and the test was considered a success. The project continued to 1959 with a series of later tests using North American Super Sabres. Orders were actually placed for 148 suitably modified F-100s. Interestingly, the Russians were involved in a series of similar experiments using MiG-19s at around the same time. The idea was finally abandoned with the development of more reliable and accurate missile systems.